All right, so uh, let's talk about pride and home ownership. Obviously, pride, it's a, it's a, well, I mean, obviously, this is something that with the city uh, is uh, involved in, and mm-hmm. pride is something that uh, is, a, is a great movement for sure. Uh, so uh, we're going to parlay that into uh, talking about home ownership and pride in home ownership. So yeah, and and the Pride Festival is starting obviously this weekend yep. into the following weekend. Yep. it's certainly been a tumultuous time for Pride it here has, in Halifax. Yeah, uh, you know, I think any volunteer organization certainly it's been challenging over the last couple of years, and yeah. I think. Putting on an event of this magnitude, I think, you know, we were saying that Pride in Halifax is one of the biggest prides in Canada. Right. Uh, it certainly is tough. And, you know, there's been some leadership changes and things. Yeah. So we'll see how uh, what ends up happening during Pride. I know the yeah. parade is on, yeah. on yeah. and uh, there's a flag raising uh, that's happening Thursday uh, with a TD block party after that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yep. All right. So when it comes to uh, home ownership and and pride, obviously people's homes, I mean, it really does become uh, not in everybody's case, but in in some people, it becomes an identity to them, does it not? Their home? I think 100 percent it does. And, you know, overall, there's been studies around home ownership, like in the queer community, and it's such a low percentage. I think sometimes it's low because of, you know, socioeconomic situations. I think sometimes it's low just, you know, awareness and even like motivation about being a homeowner. Why, why do you say that? I, I, I I don't know. I don't know why, why it's low. I think here specifically in Halifax, and we can talk about the economics of the situation. You really need two incomes to be able to buy a home. The average home price is over 500,000. And that means that you really need household income over, over $125,000 a year. So typically you need two people to be able to make that happen just on average. Yeah. And I think for some, you know, queer people, they want to go and do it on their own. You know, I think that life hasn't always been easy. Like mm-hmm. I can speak even to myself, like, you know, we've all had ups and downs, you know, in our in our lives. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's one barrier to entry. But it's also proven, and there's been studies around this, that people that own a home are typically more involved in their community. Yeah. And you feel more connection to your community and you typically get more involved in your your community. We were also talking about, uh, you know, people that own electric vehicles. The bulk of people who own electric vehicles are homeowners. Mm -hmm. So there's just so many things that are tied around, you know, owning a home. And I'm not just saying about a single family home. Right. Maybe it's a condo. Maybe, you know, it's a semi-detached, you know, whatever. There's lots of different types of homes that you can own. Mm-hmm. But when you own it, you have the control of your, really your future. Right. A, your financial future. Yeah. But B, you know, there's no one telling you what you can and cannot do within you really your own home. Right. And I think within building a community, you know, owning a home is just so, so important. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the socioeconomic uh situation i wasn't aware that there was that that the queer community had a socioeconomic disadvantage quite well, honestly i wasn't aware of that you know i think that there's probably people that are on both ends of the spectrum yeah you know i definitely do think that there are uh you know some challenges around uh fair income and you know access to jobs mm-hmm. and things like that i can tell you that there certainly is a percentage of the community that you know, have a hard time breaking out of even kind of those entry level types jobs. Mm-hmm. And because of, because of their, of that, uh, because of their identity, really? I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. You wouldn't, I just, I just, it's, it's to me and look, I don't want to be Pollyanna here, it is but 2023. It's, it's ridiculous that people still have those attitudes. Yeah. It's and ridiculous. I, I agree. And yeah. you, you think that, you know, we hear about this and we're talking about all types of minorities, not just queer people. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you hear this about African Canadians and whatever right. it, you know, it, yeah. there's not, it, it's not an equal playing field. Yeah. And yeah. you would think in 2023 it would be, right. but I think Todd, that's why even having things like pride and talking about things like pride in home ownership, mm-hmm. it's just bring it also yeah. up to that forefront because yeah. it's things that you don't even think about. Right. Well, it's so, and, it's, and it, you know what? I have a lot of advantages, Todd. So yeah. it's not like I'm just talking here from my ivory tower. Right. I have a great life, yeah. but it just didn't happen overnight. There, there yeah. was a lot of kicking and screaming and blood, sweat, and tears to even yeah. just get to this stage in my life. So yeah. I can feel it. Um, and you know what? I'm very lucky. And not everyone else is. Yeah. 
Well, it's funny because, I mean, obviously uh, doing talk radio that I do every day, I, t- I open the phone lines and you get all types of, all comments. All walks of and life. And all walks of life. Mm-hmm. And I do welcome all opinions. But when people come out and say, because there's there's these people who have what they call straight pride, and it just it, it infuriates me that somebody can't delineate between the difference between the two. Straight pride is a ridiculous, and 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 if you're offended by this, people, I'm sorry, but it's a ridiculous comparison when you I look agree. at at the at the at the struggle that that the gay community has gone through. It wasn't that long ago being gay was illegal in this country. Like we're only talking a few decades ago. Seriously, and yeah. you know what? It wasn't even cool to be gay yeah. even 20 years ago. Right. I can remember even yeah. like when I came out, like it, that was like not the in thing to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so do you, have you uh, found that, I mean, you've, you've built an incredible business mm-hmm. and, and, and it's just a fact you have, you're an amazing entrepreneur. So uh, have you found, have you faced discrimination in your business? I 100% have, yeah. you know, I, I 100% have. And, um, I never let it get me down. I think that's the one thing that really, yeah. for me, I try to keep at the at, at at the top of my mind. And it doesn't matter who I am and what the situation is. I just continue to, you know, forge forward. Yeah. And like I've even had clients that don't want to do business with me because but, I'm gay. But they do. Some clients decide that they don't want to. I've actually had people straight out ask me. Is that right? Flat out. Yeah. And you know, I have no problem. Be like, yeah, either you want to do business with me or, or you don't. I'm, yeah. a, I'm, I'm a rock star yeah. uh, mortgage broker. Yeah. It doesn't matter what, what I'm yeah. doing in my personal yeah. life. Um, but I'm not hiding it either. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I think I certainly have broken through some glass ceilings. Yeah. Uh, at least here. I personally think Halifax and I think Nova Scotia is very progressive. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah. I think we're very liberal here yeah. in, um, in Nova Scotia, yeah. but not everyone has had those same experiences. Yeah. And I need to also re- remember that. And also outside of Halifax, and I think in more rural settings, it can certainly be much more challenging. And yeah. I don't think people are right. as accepting as they are here. No, well, I will. I mean, look, like it's, we've been doing this now for the better part of five years. And and you and I had a great rapport right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. But I, I will say not once have I ever had anybody say to me, Anything discriminate like behind your back or anything like that? Why are you talking to this guy or what? Never have I heard anything. So people must obviously respect the fact that I'm going to tell them what I think if they, and maybe that's why they don't say it. But I, I can honestly say it's not, I've not heard anything negative. Well, and, and I think that you're such all. a great advocate too, Todd, that yeah. you would just like tell them where to go. Where to go. Pound and, it. yeah. Um, not everyone has those advocates, Todd, though. Yeah. Not everybody has people that, you know, are really going to be on their side yeah. and really help to build a community. Yeah. You know, I think in Halifax, typically we have a lot of uh, queer people who live on the peninsula. Yeah. And as you know, it's just so prohibitive yeah. even to rent an apartment on the peninsula. Like right. the vacancy is so, so low. Yeah. So I think... You know, there's certainly ways around, you know, making it happen. We'll talk about it in our in our next segment. Yeah. You know, one thing I really want to touch on, and I'm seeing much more people buying homes that are not necessarily in a relationship. And maybe mm-hmm. we can touch on that sure. here a little bit more in our next segment. Okay. Mortgage one one your guide to home ownership. Clinton Wilkins and myself, Todd Vino. We'll be right back. If you've liked what you've heard and you want to learn more, feel free to visit us online at teamclinton.ca.